I think one of the biggest problems we face now is that business leaders, who I think are a critical constituency for a lot of the things that need to happen, business leaders of global enterprises have less of a stake in the quality of public policy in the United States than they used to. What do I, what do I mean by that? If you're running a multinational firm and half your sales are outside the United States today, and in the next five years most of your growth is coming from outside the United States, if the U.S. education system is failing, it may be a pity for your country, but it may not be a big problem for your business. And if we're honest about that, and I think most business leaders don't like to conceptualize it in those terms, but if we have an honest conversation about that as a country, it helps explain why, you know, business leaders today will say, well, you know, if, if the Kentucky school system isn't good, I can hire the engineers and cite the manufacturing place I need in Singapore. And that changes the conversation. And I think what we need, and one of the things I urge in my book, is really a resurgence of what I think of as patriotic U.S.-based business leaders who can step outside some of their traditional um, incentives or the polls that they feel now globally to say, time out. You know, as Americans, we need to get our house in order and we need to do what we need to. And I'm prepared as a business and with other business leaders to step up and be a constituent for the changes that we need to make so that all Americans have a chance to thrive. I think, you know, unless we have business leaders actually take greater ownership of some of these public issues, then we're going to have a hard time solving them. So I'm hopeful in the sense that I think that once appealed to, business leaders can actually step up in this way, because they have before. After World War II, the Marshall Plan, the whole economic recovery, business leaders played an enormous part in that in the U.S. But I think they haven't been summoned, really, to step up in a way that they need to. And I think uh, if they are, I, I, I'm hopeful they'll answer the call. I'm not sure if I'm thinking of it so much in the sense of the superstar CEO and the, you know, they're the brand of the company, though that's, you know, in a media age, that, that seems to be, you know, a trend that, 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 that continues. But I think we're going to need, we're certainly going to need a, a good list of name brand CEOs, people who are known to the public and who have clout, to step up on some of these public issues to help say, you know, business wants to solve this. And r right now, business ends up Business approaches all its issues as if they were in a silo. There's the trade issue, we want free trade, or we want protectionism, depending on the business you got. There's taxes, and then we deal with that. There's, uh, you know, different state-level issues, et cetera. I think what business, what, what too many CEOs don't understand is that all these things meld together now in an era when ordinary Americans feel tremendous anxiety about their economic future. And unless business, as a constituency, views these issues in an integrated way, and realizes that business needs to be an advocate for changes in the social contract that we're talking about, then the consensus for markets and capitalism, et cetera, is going to erode. And there'll be a real backlash against the values that most business leaders care about. Mm -hmm.